Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Poor Man's Bonsai. It's a super windy day, so hopefully you're not hearing the wind picking up on the mic. But uh, anyway, today I am going to be putting together a false weeping willow look. So I'm going to start, start right off the bat by saying I'm not working on an actual weeping willow species tree. I'm working on um, a, like a false version, so basically giving the illusion of a weeping willow. So what I have here is a um, Portulacaria afra, but this is the Prostrata subspecies, which these are a little more, they creep on the ground a little bit more than the other species um, that you've seen me do videos on. And you can see they put out these long kind of drooping um, branches that when I saw this at a nursery, I've actually had this for a couple of years now. When I saw this at a nursery a while back, I immediately thought, man, this would be cool to do a weeping willow kind of look on a tree. And so this one in particular, you'll see it in a little bit, but it has a really cool trunk. Oh, anyway, this one in particular has a really cool trunk that I think will, will uh, look really cool and really like pretty much immediately give the miniature tree a look. And I think this thing will look like a weeping willow more or less. So what I'm gonna do is put it in this pot, which as you can see is being taken up right now by some other elephant bush uh, cuttings from, from previous videos and whatnot. And uh, I'm gonna take these out and put some of these in some of these little pots and then uh, kind of create, what I wanna do is take the corner of this and put this guy somewhere in the corner and then create like a miniature landscape on the rest of it, maybe do like a dry riverbed look. So. Uh, Join me on this video and let's see what we can do with this with this uh, elephant bush to create a create a false weeping willow. Let's do it. Okay, first things first, let's get our pot ready. So I just have these three little terracotta pots that I'm gonna throw some of these in. Some of these cuttings are actually pretty, they have a pretty cool look already. And so the rest I'll just put in a different pot. Uh, to continue to grow, but I bought this. Uh, it's this caculent and caculent <laughs> cactus and succulent um, soil mix, which has uh, it has a lot of sand and like crushed rock in the mixture already. So I'm gonna give that a try for today. Um, see how that works. But this first one I really like. This one already really well developed. So I think this one will will make a cool little tree uh, right off the bat and so hopefully putting it in its own pot will help it to, uh, to develop quicker and um, I should be wiring these in but I'm going to move kind of quickly and um, you can see this one already has a nice look this one will be a nice bonsai soon or already but uh, a nice developed one soon there's another one. Some of these, the roots aren't very good. I think the soil is a little saturated with water, but hopefully uh, they do okay. I'll put the rest of these in a, maybe a bigger pot that, that they can all grow in. All right, so I got my three favorites put in little pots and the rest I put in that bigger terracotta pot. And we have our empty bonsai pot ready to go for this false weeping willow. Let's do it. Okay. So let's get started on this project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the Prostrata subspecies of elephant bush. So you can see these branches just, uh, they just, they dangle. Like when this is growing on the ground, it tends to sprawl rather than grow up. Not like a, like a typical kind of upright bush. And so um, I think that when this is my theory and my hope is when it's planted and kind of um, elevated up in this pot that it, when the branches will hang down and give that weeping willow look have my pot ready to go. So I actually put the wire in only on one of the holes because as I mentioned earlier, I wanna put the tree sort of off to the side of the pot so that I have the rest of the of the pot here to kind of do a, a miniature landscape look as the tree kind of, almost like the tree is up on a hill slipping down into a creek or something. So set that aside for now. And first thing I'm gonna do is just show you the trunk on this thing. I'm really excited about how it, how it's, how it will potentially look. So pull it out of the pot. And you can see it's got a really cool trunk, just so much potential after some trimming and whatnot to, uh, to look pretty developed right away, I think. So there's actually a bonus one in here, which is cool. <laughs> so funny enough, this one almost looks like kind of the typical Portulacaria afra, 
Um, it does the the foliage looks completely different on the two, but this one's growing on the side here, so I totally take this one out and start a little tree with it as well. But really good root system. I'm obviously going to have to cut a lot back, but um, so yeah, what I think I'm going to do first is cut a lot of these roots off, kind of get them spread out, put it in the bonsai pot, and uh, and then start doing some trimming on the on the tree. The roots are pretty. The root ball is pretty hard, so I'm actually going to just take this saw and start by just doing this, cutting the whole bottom section off. Boom, it's like a big burger patty or something. And uh, immediately that frees us up with a lot of space and that loosens everything up too. So I'm gonna separate this, this um, other one right now. So you can see a lot of potential with this one too. The root has a, a nice big root right there off to the side and um, this one has a lot of potential to be a cool bonsai in the future as well. So, you know, just sort of breaking up the roots here. And uh, now it's really, I'm really able to see the trunk now. Looks really cool. And um, I guess take, I'm just going to take my trimmer and Start trimming some of this back. Man, this thing is awesome. So cool. Hopefully you could see why I thought it would make a cool weeping willow. Just because of how it's it's kind of the trunk is going up and then all the branches come out, like almost like a firework or something. So, what I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is kind of find the front, what I would call the front, and uh, just looking at it. To me, I'm not crazy about this look, but I really like this part. I'm a big fan of trunks that kind of slope up, and from this angle, a little hard to see, but from this angle, you can see the trunk kind of curves like this. So I'm gonna use this as the front. So I'm gonna reposition and get this thing in the pot pretty quickly. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to use that succulent and cactus mix. Put uh, a fair bit in um, on the bottom. And because I want to create a miniature landscape on this, I'm going to have the tree sort of sloped up a little bit so that the pot kind of travels downward. So. I have to refill my little cup here in a little bit, but let's start by doing that. So kind of loosely position the tree in place. And um, yeah, I'm picturing something like this. And so I can almost, <laughs> I can almost move these branches out of the way like it's hair or something. Um, but I think that will be a good spot for it. So I'm just going to mount it up a tiny bit more and then we'll wire it in place. Okay, so I kind of piled some dirt over on this other side here so I could kind of just bring it over to the elephant bush after I have it in place. So I'm not too worried about trimming a lot of the roots off uh, because it's got a lot of room in the pot to grow. It's not going to be immediately root bound, so. Um, it's going to be a little hard to wire in, but I think I can get it. I'm actually going to trim some of this excess wire off, make, making it hard to get my hand in there. All right, so we're in place. Now I'm going to just sort of backfill the tree a bit over here. And it's bringing some of this other dirt. Okay, 
So before I continue, I'm gonna actually water this, make sure the roots stay moist and stuff, and then I'll start trimming the tree and creating some of the branch structure that we're going for. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so here we are at the tree. I'm gonna flip these branches back over. Um, we're watered. Um, and as you can see, these branches are, you know, they, they look like a weeping willow, but they're way too long, right? In comparison to the pot and whatnot. So I think as far as trimming, all I'm gonna do on this, I wanna keep the long branch look, but I just don't want them going so far below the pot that you, you totally just, like right now it just looks, looks like a big octopus is kind of taking over this pot. So what we wanna do, or what I'm trying to do is shape the branches in a way that you could sort of peer through and still see the main trunk. Um, Cause I think that is where uh, this thing is just, has such an awesome trunk. I think that's where this um, thing will really shine is the really developed trunk combined with the branches. So, um, you know, as I sort of untangle these, they're just going every which direction, which is cool, but again, I don't think it's totally giving the willow look right now. So I'm gonna just start by, by trimming back these branches and creating visual space. So in three cuts, that really opened up everything. Let's keep going. It's amazing how compact the leaves are on this foliage. What's interesting is the further down that goes, you can see the leaves get bigger. So I don't know if it's that, it almost strikes me that new growth, I don't know much about this subspecies, but it appears that the newer growth, like the smaller branches have the bigger leaves and maybe as it gets more developed and the trunk, the bark gets darker, maybe it um, gets the finer leaves. So. Yeah, I love it. I'm already seeing a lot more of the trunk and uh, cut off this little, some of these ones on the trunk are, are definitely not necessary. And, and I'd like it to be where when someone looks at this thing, they can look through it and see out the other end. So I trim quite a bit in the back here. I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can get a better look at what's going on. So you can see we're still pretty cluttered in and around in and around this part. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna cut back quite a bit on a lot of these back ones. Okay, so that's looking a lot better there. See the trunk. And you're starting to see space behind it. Hello. So especially if I kind of can elevate this up a bit. Now these front branches here are cool, but I almost wonder if I need to get rid of one of them because I think they are detracting a little bit from the trunk. Well, I guess it depends on the angle. Maybe I will leave it for now. I'm just gonna take a little bit more off the side here. Now it's hard to see in there. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. Okay, so it's zoomed in. And you can see branches like this one. I just don't think it's contributing to, even though it's pretty developed, this the bark, I don't think it's contributing to the look of the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one off. That immediately opened up some space. So I'm gonna see if there's any more branches like that. I see these, this little one here, I'm gonna take that off. Yeah, I can just pull those off. All right. So 
branch back here. Okay. Yeah, now I'm really liking it. It's definitely giving the trunk, it's letting the trunk shine a little bit more, the, the main trunk. And, um, and just by removing a few of those, those lower branches. Man, the main trunk is so cool. Such a good find. I mean, not even anything to my credit. I was just stoked that the nursery had, um, you know, uh, elephant bush that were, that were this developed to, to buy and they were not that expensive. I think this was $11. And um, that's, you know, that's a good amount of growth to, um, uh, to have on, on a plant that was not very expensive. So I'm just gonna trim a few off the top here. So odd how the branches are. If you look, this branch starts way back here, comes up, and it splits off into all these other branches that I just have sort of laying over the top. Well, that's that's how it was actually. So I think it gives the illusion that this is all, you know, a mass of leaves, which it is. But they're just the branches are coming from every which direction. It's really wild. Now, if I lift these up. I see, you see, you can could, you could see two parallel branches. One right here and one right above it, these two. I think I'm gonna cut one of them because I don't think they're both adding to it, the look. I think I only need one. And they both have quite a bit of branches on them that shoot off of them, but I think we'll still be okay if I remove one of them. Looking at them, I think I think I'm gonna remove the bottom one because if I show you, most of the branches are coming down below and they don't have a lot of foliage on them. So I'm gonna remove this one. Yeah, you can see there wasn't much on that. So now we're really getting a lot of visual space going, I accidentally just broke that branch off. So cut that out. Yeah, this is cool. Love how it's turning out. All right, the only thing I think I'm gonna do, I think at this point is remove this branch right here because they're just hanging down um, in the middle I don't know I just I like giving as much space as I can to see through the tree while still seeing a lot of branches that are drooping and hopefully you know these will just grow all these branches will grow back but I think it looks pretty cool so I'm going to um, add a little bit more soil on the top here and then just kind of work on what I'm going to do with the rest of it After watering this, I could definitely confirm this soil drains pretty nicely because it has a lot of those um, particles of sand and rock in it. And so my idea with this, I'm not going to put any other plants in here right now at least. This would be cool to add moss to or something later. But I think all I'm going to do right now is just basically do like a false like riverbed. Maybe kind of running like this. I don't know, I just, when I think of a, a weeping willow, I just picture it kind of next to a stream or something. So, I was kind of thinking through how I'm gonna do that and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that, that oil spill cleanup stuff that I have that I've used, that I sometimes use as an as a element of bonsai soil. I'm just gonna kind of run it along here, create like a little riverbed and then take some bigger rocks and sort of line the edge of the, of the bank. So I have it right here. So I'm just gonna Maybe running along this way. 
kind of flatten that out. Cool. All right. Now I think kind of placement of some of these bigger rocks is going to really help give that feel. Because if you're walking along a stream, you'll notice there are some bigger boulders and and uh, and whatnot that sort of help frame the, the creek. Oh, my wires poking up there. Um, and the more you can kind of blend it into the landscape, the better it will look. So I'm not just, you notice I'm not just setting them on top, kind of setting them in. I think a big one would look cool right here. Let's see if I can find something. I found this really cool smooth one. Pretty big. Another little one here. Let's do one more big one right here. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that oil spill stuff and sprinkle it in and around so where it looks like the riverbed's coming up a little bit. If you've ever walked along a river, you'll notice it's like kind of sandy around the rocks too. It's not just in the water. Sandy and rocky. Cool. And then upon looking at it again, I think there's, I think these four are very similar. So I found a bigger rock. This one, I'm actually going to stick in here to help give the illusion of that curve in the riverbed. So the stream's kind of wrapping around this way. I think it looks pretty good. So, yeah, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll replace these two and do one more medium-sized rock there. There we go. So now we have our weeping willow next to our dry riverbed. And the cool thing about this is this, hopefully all this pot, all this um, pot space will allow the roots to to spread beyond just the little area that it's planted in, but it can have freedom to kind of go all the way around here too. So I'm just going to uh, get some close-ups of this. Maybe water it one more time, get some close-ups, and uh, call it a day. False weeping willow. Gasp! You guys, I forgot. Um, I think my wife had bought this cool little bridge somewhere recently. 
so I nabbed it just for you know as long as she'll let me have it but I think this will fit perfectly right here yes so now someone could a miniature being can walk along the bridge and go sit under the weeping willow listen to the creek rushing by read a book leave okay close-up time Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, this was a really fun little project. It's been one I've been meaning to do for a long time with this specific plant. And I, I'm really enjoying how it turned out. Um, I love the, the trunk, I love the, the branches, the, the little riverbed and the, and the bridge that I came across. Thanks babe for letting me use it. Um, and uh, I think it's really cool. I'm excited to see how this thing continues to develop and I might add some more accent plants at some point, but um, as you can see, it already has flowers and grass. JK. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, it's always fun to have you guys join along with these little projects. And um, yeah, hopefully it develops well. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.